Genesis 50. Genesis 50. Somebody has to teach you when the devil comes to your front doorstep, he don't have to come in your house. When you receive a bad diagnosis, you ain't got to accept it. You start warring with the word of God right at that point of discomfort. I don't wait until things get bad. I, 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 I man up right now. Genesis 50, Genesis 50. Start reading in verse 19, Genesis 50, verse 19. Joseph said to them, do not be afraid for am I in the place of God? He asked a question. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Father, we bless you, we honor you, we thank you for the word of the Lord. We thank you for what you're doing in this great assembly now. We thank you for what you have to say, and I won't say anything more than what you have to say, and I won't say anything less than what you have to say. But Father, I thank you right now. I yield my entire being to you. God, that you would do what you will. I am your servant. You are my God. And today, we will please you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Go ahead and take your seats in the presence of the Lord. I am 53 years old. <laughs> in the best time of my life. You know, Tim, at, at, at 53, you're still strong. See, you can be about 30, and you can be in your 40s, and you can have strength but not have wisdom. But when you get in your 50s and you still got strength and you still got wisdom, you know how to get some things done, amen? So what you're seeing is my wisdom and my strength merged together so I can get things done and I ain't gonna have to go back and clean up. We're on the right track, amen? Woo! My mind, my body, my money, everything working together. <laughs> all right, all right, y'all sit down, y'all sit down. I'm gonna read another verse of scripture to you. I already preached, I preached like I was like a wild. Them women pulled it out of me. See, they, they thought I was running on empty. Ha ha, I run on empty when I get home, but not while I'm out at the church. See, you gotta learn how to get more than enough so you can do more than what's expected of you. Uh, Romans 8 and verse 28, Romans 8 and verse 28. Romans 8 and verse 28, y'all look good. I went to see that same arrive when my birthday table comes by. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who, are, who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. That's very strong passage of scripture and I think it's been misquoted a lot of times and they said all things work together for my good uh, do you love God though now I'm not going to deal with that very much because I want to take you on a journey this morning uh, but you got to read the entire verse and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are called or the called according to his purpose. So you gotta love God, you gotta be called, and you gotta be in his purpose. So when those things are happening, whatever hell has to offer you won't work. You understand what I'm saying? So stay with me on this. I'm gonna walk you through some things this morning. Uh, my title is, it's working for me. It's working, it's working for me. I got about five points. It's working for me. It's working for me. It don't matter what it is. It's working for me. I changed my whole attitude. I don't frown on bad days. It's working for me. It doesn't matter if I got a, a little opposition. It's working 
for me. You understand what I'm saying? You got to change your attitude about things because if you don't change your attitude about things, you're, you're, you're not going to make it very far. What, what happened to me didn't decrease me, it increased me. It was a learning experience. Now I have some knowledge about some things that I didn't have knowledge about prior to. Don't, don't get mad because somebody attacks you. Now you know who your enemy is. See, you got to learn how to, to look at it positive because it could have been your enemy for a long period of time, but now that they lifted up their head and you know who they are. No, don't get depressed. Start clapping. Praise the Lord. Because the only thing that are defeating you is what you can't see. As long as I can see you, I got you. <laughs> As long as I can mark and track your operation, I'm good. I can sit down and eat. Bible says, he prepared the table before you in the presence of your enemy. Watch me eat this meal. Touch your neighbor, tell him, watch me eat this meal. It's all a setup so you can go up. I think I need to say that again. It's all a setup so you can go up. See, some of y'all want to go up, but you don't want the setup. But there's always a setup for those who are going up. God's got to make you leave what you got to go to where he wants you to go. Uh, I, I heard Bishop Jake said he, when, you, when it's time for elevation, you got to decide what you're going to leave. <laughs> See, y'all want your old day and your new day. No, you got to leave the old day to have the new day, or you're not going to have the new day if you, unless you leave the old day. Your neighbor's stressed too thin, trying to hold on to yesterday. Yesterday has a lot of pain acquainted with it. I can't tell you today doesn't have some pain, but I tell you it, it will advance you. All right, I got about five points. Then we're going to celebrate my birthday. See, I'm not like your average preacher. Turn the whole service into me. Everything I do is about him. Because I don't know what will try to derail me. Okay. Number one, number one, number one. All the things that have occurred in your life have placed you where God wants you. All the things that have occurred in your life have placed you where God wants you. It may not be where you want to be, but it is where he wants you to be. Now, now I want to help somebody that wants what God doesn't want. Look at your neighbor, tell him, he's putting me in place. Everything that's happened to this point has been putting you in place. Joseph was sold out by his brothers. His daddy loved him. He could have stayed there with his daddy and his mama. They just had a, a sailor moment. But he went out among his brothers, got his coat stripped, and then he was thrown into a pit. They talked about killing him. But the old elder brother, Reuben, decided not to kill him. Let's sell him. But they didn't understand what they were doing is they were putting him in God's place for him. So I want to change your perspective when you got haters. They have no negative impact on your life. Stop staying up all night. It was the negative things that put him in place. Wasn't the positive things that put him in place. His dream was positive. The in-between, he had to deal with some stuff that was positioning him. So stuff was happening. Look at your neighbor, tell them stuff happens. Doesn't matter if you're a good person or a bad person. Stuff happens. Normally when God wants to change a bad person to a good person, stuff happens. People don't just change that are bad. Things happen in life and it shifts them. 
Mm. Tell her, get ready for the shift. Not the conference. This, this shift going to happen with you. You're going to discern what's going on with you a little bit differently today than you did yesterday. And you're going to appreciate those who helped to navigate you to where God wanted you to be. Number one, all the things that have occurred in your life has placed you where God wants you. But do you think God would want me to be where I am? Yes, because you're under the sound of my voice. Because if you weren't where you were, are right now, you wouldn't listen to me. So to get the wisdom to get you the rest of the way, God has to maneuver us. You know, y'all, if, if everything was fine, money was flowing, marriage was fine, kids was fine, body was fine, mind was fine, you wouldn't be sitting here today. But you're sitting here today because something happened. And whatever happened made you come to 117 12 Court Northwest. And you try to say not so, I said it is so because your car is in the parking lot. And you're sitting in this sanctuary. Number two. What was meant to derail or sabotage you, God is using it for your good. See, you got to stop crying over some stuff and start laughing at it. I'm serious. The stuff you're crying over, you need to laugh at. A lot of things I'm learning to laugh at. <laughs> you wasted all that time to get me in the place God wanted me. Get me in the thought pattern that God wanted me to uh, be in. See, some of you are not physically moved, but you're mentally moved. I don't think like I used to think, and I'm dangerous as a thinker. Don't get around me and think you're going to get the upper hand on me. I'm a thinker. So, what was meant to derail or sabotage you, God is using it for your good. So every plot and every plan of the adversary was to move you to where God wanted you to be. Some relationships had to end. And it wasn't that you quit them, they quit you. Don't, don't, don't cry over people who walk away from you when you know you got value. You, you can tell when someone walks away from you and you have value, they don't know your expense. I just say they're so cheap in their thinking they didn't understand they were with gold. See, some of y'all think that's arrogant, but he said, when you're tried in the fire, you shall come forth as pure gold. Well, I've been tried in the fire and I'm no longer draw. Number two again, what was meant to derail or sabotage you, God is using it for your good. The thing that was meant to keep you from fulfilling God's will for your life, mm -hmm, it only set you on course for the thing that God wanted to do with you. You listen, some of y'all hate loneliness. Loneliness is the best atmosphere for God to show up with his glory. Lot, li, li, listen to me. God, God usually can't get in because you got too many friends. And some of y'all, you always need somebody around you. I, I just learned how to slap myself a high five. You understand what I'm saying? I know how to tell myself that was a good message. You, you really preach that. You really talk that. You really anointed. I learned how to start talking to myself like that. So if I don't get anything from anybody else, I got something from myself. Loneliness is not a hindrance. Loneliness is an opportunity for God to reveal himself to you. 
much of himself does he want to reveal to you and you have too many people in your company? If we can have Bishop Kennedy usher to the front, that will help me out a whole lot. But I, I'm telling you, I was telling, I was telling my daughter, Sasha, I said, there, there's some things you, you got to learn about how things operate. Because if the enemy wants to stop you, first of all, he is, if he hates you, he's going to connect with you to neutralize you. See, some of us don't understand that, that what, what, what can't stop you while you're moving will try to get inside your car and pull the wires. Because everything that's close to me doesn't mean it's riding with me. And see, you got to be wise enough. Some people can get a ride on your hood, but they don't need to be in your seat. to your destination, but you ain't coming on the inside of this. So what, what was meant to derail or sabotage you, God is using it for your good. Too many Christians are, are crying over bad stuff. I thought the Lord was with you. This is your family time. I thought the Lord was with you. He's going up there to refresh family church and then change the name again. I thought the Lord was with you. Let them talk. You're still on your journey. They, they just block you out from coming for Thanksgiving from that negativity. All right. You didn't need to hear that stuff while you're eating turkey anyway. Number two again, number two again. What was meant to derail or sabotage you, God is using it for your good. They want you, you know, will a train, train is not effective unless it's on the railing. You remove it from the rail and then it's, it's, it's not useful for anything. See, you, you have too much quality to let something derail you. You understand what I'm saying? Your precious cargo. Number three. The attempts to harm you has set you in place to sustain others. Joseph said, what you meant for evil God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. If they left me alone, I'd still be in pension. <laughs> if they left me alone, I would still be in pension. I'd be struggling with about 90 people. If they left me alone, if they had left me alone, if everybody would have just been cool, I'd still be in pension. But my railing was leading me to center point. But when they started their stuff that, to attempt to derail me and sabotage me, it put me on track. See, you gotta see this thing correctly. You're, you're, so, see, you want, you want your destiny, but you don't want your opposition. So when you want destiny and you're passionate about destiny, then you can expect opposition because opposition is the only thing that keeps you from making that wrong detour. All right, all right. The attempt to harm you has set you in place to sustain others. I wouldn't be where I am now and able to help like I help now if I stayed in Pinson. See, God is trying to get you to a place so you can save some other people other than yourself. He's trying to get you in a place of influence so that you can make a difference. But if you stay in that same old place. I hear the story about uh, 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 the eagle and the eagle that's down and you know, 
uh, when it's time for them to fly, the mother starts stirring up the nest and, and things start poking and it starts getting real uncomfortable until the eaglet jumps out of the nest and starts to spread his wings. See, as long as he was in the nest, he was off course. He wasn't going to exercise his ability. I can fly, but I'm sitting in this nest. Until this nest becomes uncomfortable, I will never see my potential manifest. So make me uncomfortable. Watch what I'll do. Touch your neighbor, tell him, make me uncomfortable. <laughs> so the attempt number three again the, the attempts to harm you has set you in place to sustain others what it done it took Joseph and took him all the way into Egypt he got a ride all the way to Egypt where he went in as a slave before it was over he was the governor see he wasn't supposed to be the governor where he was he was supposed to be the governor where he was going see some of y'all problem you're trying to be what God called you to be in the wrong place that's your problem you're expecting something you're not going to get. You're thinking, oh, they, I, I pray hard enough, they're going to love me. No, they're going to push you. Hard prayer doesn't make you move into your destiny. It's usually a little chaos that pushes you into the place that God wants you. What, 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 what person has either been fired or on the verge of being fired that God wants to be an entrepreneur? See, 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 they, they taught y'all, they taught y'all church wrong. I know some of your minds going, some of your minds going, you, you know, that's why you got to toughen up. Because God's trying to take you somewhere. See, what you got to understand is where you're going, there are a lot of wolves. I ain't talking about the ones in church. And if you're not tough and you get out there, you're going to come whimpering back here want me to put you back together again. So I'm telling you right now, there's some stuff that'll push you, but we gotta make sure you're ready and understand that no weapon formed against you is able to prosper. And if the weapon can't prosper, it's gotta elevate you. I didn't know, I didn't know they carried that many knives in church. <laughs> But it's cool now, now that I know my surroundings. It's better to know your surroundings. It's not, it's not about being, oh, oh we, we go, no, no. You got to know your, surround, your surroundings. The Bible says, know those who labor among you. You got to know who's carrying a, a, a 45. You got to know who's carrying a knife. You got to know, yeah, you got to know who got poison in the cup. You got to know all that kind of stuff. Now, I wish I could tell everybody that everybody sitting in this room is 100, but I can't tell you that. I can't tell you. I can't, you know, because the Bible doesn't tell me that. He said they come in uh, wolves and sheep coat and they dress like a sheep. They sound like a sheep, but watch them when they smile. How many fangs are they showing? See, we have, to, we have to equip the church. We have not equipped the church. He said, the Bible speaks of howling. Those are the ones who come for money and not serving. All right. So the attempt to harm you has set you in place to sustain others. What, what if I had stayed in Pensacola? Some of y'all didn't even know I was in Pensa. What, what if I stayed in Pensa? What if things had not gotten uncomfortable for me in Pensa? You would never have heard of me. Which means this point in your life, when you need what I'm saying, it wouldn't have been available. That's why you don't, you don't line yourself up with those people who have fangs and start speaking against what you need.
Number four, number four. Because you love God, bad things, as well as good things, work together for a positive outcome. It's because you love God. Listen to this. Because you love God, bad things as well as good things work together for a positive outcome. Because I love God, because you love God, the bad things that come and the good things that come are working together so that I can have a positive outcome. So when I wake up and I hear about a bad thing, I'm saying, okay, what is it supposed to do for me? How do I apply this so that I'm better at the end of the day? What, what am I supposed to be taught through this? I'm, I'm a person that I watch patterns all the time. I, I'm always, because patterns going to tell me what, what's really going on. People can say anything, but their patterns tell everything. Their patterns tell me. I, I watch people all the time, and we, we track, I track things by patterns. People can walk around and tell me how good they are well, and how much they love me, but, but then I'm looking at the patterns. You, lo you love me on my birthday, but what about those other days? That pattern outweighs today. So I watch patterns. You smile, you clap, you support it today. But then those last four or five services, what was going on with you then? That pattern outweighs that one day you celebrate. Okay. Because you love God, bad things as well as good things work together for a positive outcome. In the verse of scripture, uh, Romans 8 and verse 28, and it reads, let me read this again. Can I read it again to you? And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the call according to his purpose. So no matter what's going on, and I've learned this over the years, it took me some time, and, and age doesn't mean that you know a lot. Let me, let me just make sure. So some of you young dudes listening to old foolish dudes, you need to stop that stuff. I'm gonna say that straight up. Old doesn't mean wise anymore. <laughs> I'm preaching up in here today. <laughs> so, so, so every time some good things are happening, Herb, some bad things are happening too. It's like salt and pepper. There's never a moment when there's a mixture that everything is good and that there, there's going to be some good things, there's going to be some bad things, but it takes those ingredients to get me to where God wants me to go and you too. Some people think when bad things are happening that, what, what did I do? I need to repent. I, I'm not saved anymore. It's not that. God's trying to get you to a place that all good things is not going to get you there. Now, I, 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 I eat better. I'm more disciplined now. But I would love to have ice cream every night. I would love to eat cookies all the time, morning, noon, and night. But that's not good for me. I'm not crazy about vegetables, but that those things work for me. So I eat enough vegetables, then I get some sweets. But I got to mix it together because if I just do all sweets, I'm going to be in trouble. Meaning I'm going to have to buy all new suits and I don't want to do that. So it's a mixture of things that you have to do. And there's a mixture of things that begin to happen in life. And then this is the thing. You think the devil's in control. The devil's not in control. The devil's not in control. He may not like you, but he's not in control. What God says, okay, I'm going to kick back because the devil's already got a plan that's going to make you better at the end of the day. So he's got, while, while he's working, the only thing I'm going to stop is the thing that brings you death. But that other thing that's coming this way to try to derail you is going to put you right on track for where I'm taking you. So it doesn't take as much from me because the devil is employed by me right now. Yeah. 
See, you don't understand. You, you got to understand that the, the devil, the devil is now employed by God to make you the best that you could ever be in your entire life. So stop crying over what the devil's doing. He's on God's payroll right now, but he don't get paid at the end of the day. Working for me. Some people never should have been in my life. Some people never should have been in your life. Yeah, you cried when they left, but when you get in on the right track with God, you'll start celebrating and understand. They needed to go. They needed to leave. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, it's painful. But they needed to get out of your life. Because you love God, bad things as well as good things work together for a positive outcome. It's the outcome. See, you're stuck right here. What, what is the finished product? What is God really trying to get out of you? See, you, you want to look good as an unfinished product. No, I want to finish. What, what's going what's to gonna, what's gonna shave off some of these sharp edges on me? You know, I, I like being processed because see, where I'm going, I want to look real good when I get there. So if my enemies make me look better, come on, devil. Because you're going to make me think. My, my thinking, Shannon, has changed not because of my prayer life, not because of me studying the Bible. It's because of what I came up against that had flesh and blood. So it elevated my thinking. It transformed my way of thinking. I do a panoramic view now. I don't just zoom in like that. No, no, no. I know where you are. The people are surprised when I'm out there at the door and I tell them you were in uh, sections, this section over here and I, on this row over here. And I, they, they're surprised. It's because I have a panoramic view now. See, some of y'all are so focus in. You don't know what's going on around you. But when you go through enough stuff and got enough enemies, you start backing up some and you start getting a better view of it. You ain't afraid. You just get a better view of everything. So I can't say the bad things were working against me. The bad things were working for me because I see things differently now than I did prior to. Disappointment is also education. I think they missed that. Disappointments are also education. You didn't know how weak that thing was. It couldn't come through for you until you got disappointed by it. Not only are you hurt, now you're educated. Number five, number five, number five. And a lot of people have good intentions, y'all. They don't mean any harm. But when God's got a plan for your life, they're going to fail you. See, everybody's looking for something to lean on other than God. He said, acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. But y'all leaning on too much stuff that can't hold you up. So don't get upset with, for what couldn't hold you up. Get excited about the one that kept you so you can hear what I'm saying today. He kept you. Listen to me. He kept you. He kept you because I can see it on you. He kept you to, so you can hear this message today. So you can go reevaluate and know that the devil's not winning against you. Number five. When you are walking in God's purpose, bad moments lead to a great day. Woohoo, Jesus. When you are walking in God's purpose, bad moments lead to great days. The moment was bad, but the day is great. I said the moment was bad, but the day is great. How many of y'all had some bad moments? Some of y'all probably in a bad moment right now. So it's an announcement to you that a great day is right behind that bad moment. How do you know that? We've been made endure for a night. 
but joy comes in the morning. There's always a great day after a moment of turmoil. But why is he so excited? I'm excited not about the day I'm in. I'm excited about the day that's coming when the sun comes up. <laughs> My nightmare can only last through the night. The suffering can only go through the night. As the clock ticks, the devil is losing. I said as the clock ticks, the devil is losing. If you're watching the time clock, every tick tock is a time that God is coming closer and the devil is losing his power. I, I'm ready, Shannon. See, I got I to gotta put something in your mind. Let's take a seat. I got to put something in your mind that lasts, because sometimes you don't remember the word because people you run with steal it from you as soon as you leave church. You're wondering where it went. It's the people you talk to. All right, all right, all right. Wonder why I can't remember the word? Because you hang out with the wrong people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You get with the right people, they begin to meditate and rehearse it back to you. Don't run with people that doesn't rehearse what you just heard. So, so I, I was on my journey and I was just about to make a right because I was exiting. I was on my way out. I wanted to sit down. I got tired of being in front of people, but I was blocked. I see the edge of the door, but I can't get to it because I'm blocked. I would love to be sitting next to Tiffany just listening to the word. Because see, if I was an entrepreneur and I am that in my mind, I take the word and I go and I thrive in life. And then you can't uh, say anything about the amount of money I made. But I, I got blocked by a cone head. So I moved on just a little bit further. I was going just a little bit further and I thought I was gonna find me another exit. So I can just drop out of this thing because people are crazy this day. You don't want a pastor in these days. You know I mean? People think they want to do it, but they don't know how much people try to block them, stop them. It doesn't matter how much integrity they have. doesn't matter how much they feed them. No matter how many hospitals you, you visit, no matter how many funerals you go to, it don't matter. They still don't like you. Yeah. Goodness. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get out of this thing, but I'm blocked. So what do I do now? I see another exit over there. But on my way to the next exit, I, I'm blocked. Now I'm thinking all these cones are the devil. Yeah, I'm thinking all this blockage is the devil. But where God wants me, he blocks where I want to go and turns me and sends me right back up to where he wants me to be. If it wasn't for that cone head, I wouldn't be on this platform. If it wasn't for the block is there and the block is there and the block is there, I'd be at the door. Slap your neighbor high five, tell him it's working for me. <laughs> you thought you were getting off course. No, human nature wants to quit. Human nature wants to throw the towel in. Human nature says, I'm tired of this. But when you can't get out, you gotta just go in. I kept getting blocked. Bishop Kennedy, I just kept getting blocked. And they think blocking me can stop me, but blocking me elevates me. I went from the floor to the platform because they kept, I, I, hey, let me tell you, you're about to get an upgrade. They wanted to block you, but they didn't know they were just redirecting you to God's plan for your life. And can I find about a hundred people that had a lot of blockage? But 
This is your moment. <laughs> Woo! You need to quit. No, I need to stay in the game. You need to throw the towel in. No, I need to pick up the towel and start waving it. It's my victory towel. With all these, all this buckets, you must be a bad somebody in the spirit. Uh, you must be, God's going to use you to do something tremendous. And I just start saying, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You got to learn how to say, yes, Lord. It doesn't matter how bad it is. It doesn't matter how the devil tries to block you. Music, people, it's going to be okay. I dare you to shout right there. working for me. The pew that I would have went back there and sat on won't hold me. If God got a purpose for me, the pew is not going to be good for me because I'm going to bring a curse on the road that I'm on because I'm outside of the will of God. But God just redirected me. When I wanted to go sit down, God wouldn't let me get to the seat. How many of y'all were trying to sit down? But God said no. See, yeah, just give him about uh, uh, 10 seconds of praise right here. See, some things you're hurting about, you should be celebrating God about it. It was good that I was afflicted, baby, because I wouldn't have this revelation, this anointing on my life unless I gone through what I went through. You, you, take, you take my anointing when everybody's supporting and everybody's amening me. It takes away from my anointing. I gotta have a few ignorant brothers out there that wanna sabotage me in order to upgrade me in the anointing. You always go to a higher level when you got opposition. And I don't know about you, but you probably got enough opposition right now for the promotion that God has for you. And I dare you to just start celebrating your elevation. against you shall be able to prosper as the word of God. <laughs> Woo! Where are my women at? I need those 300 and some women that were in here at 930. I need you to just lose it. We want to be a Michael Jackson. Baby, you got to walk on the devil's head. Everything that tried to stop you can't stop you. It just elevated you. Yet. I said you ain't seen anything yet. 
I said you have not seen anything yet. Put put the uh, if you got it, put it the uh, apostolic global impact seal on the string. See, anytime you get opposition, you shift upward. You gotta understand the pressure only comes to crack the the, the hole and the and the and the and the, and the, and the outer form of you, so that what's in you will come out of you. You have too much in you to stop where you are. I said you have too much in you. Stop fretting over the pain. Find out what the pain will bring out of you. But I don't like pain. I love pain. Pain's my sign of promotion. If I don't have no pain, ain't no, I'm not going any higher. But if I got some pain, it is the announcement, baby. My next dimension has come. Give us one more shout. I said give us one more shout. being local. Pain took me national. More pain took me global. I never would have been global if I didn't have some pain. I never would have entertained national if I didn't have some pain. So now that I had enough pain that worked for me, what about your situation that is working for you and you just got the wrong attitude? Look at your neighbor. Tell him, change your attitude. Yeah, wait on a response from him. Change your attitude. Change your attitude. I know they Judas. Change your attitude. I can't get to my destination without a Judas. Change your attitude. Somebody, let's give God one more shot.